How to Grow Your Money Tax-Free in 2024. In the U.S., non-residents do not have to pay income taxes on capital gains. Now, I'm starting with the prize here. I'm starting with the main point of the video because it's really important to understand and it creates a lot of opportunities for people living outside the U.S. And this generally is applying to stocks and brokerage and investment accounts. And that's how we're applying it in this video. And I want to share with you a great opportunity to invest and to grow your wealth tax-free in the U.S. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you who can do this, why this works, like technically, what part of the tax code, how to set this up and how to structure it and actually get the accounts open, and what you need to be careful about. There's some really important things at the end in the what you need to be careful about, some real tips and tricks and some stuff I've learned from advising clients on this for many years that you definitely want to stick around and be aware of because if you want to take advantage of this no tax investment in the biggest stock market and the biggest capital market in the world, then you really need to know what to be careful about because there are some potential pitfalls that are both extremely serious and easily avoidable. So let's get into the first part. Who can do this? So this applies for all non-residents. This doesn't mean Americans outside of the U.S. You still are a U.S. person, a U.S. citizen. You have to pay tax on your law, on your gains because you're an American. It doesn't apply to students who live in the U.S. So if you are, let's say, from Peru and you're on a student visa in the U.S., if you live in the U.S., you still have to pay taxes on your capital gains. There's a specific article, and you can Google search it because I don't. It, this is what this video is about, but. Non-residents on student visas do have to pay a 30% tax on capital gains if they live in the U.S. So that's something that I haven't spoken about much before, but I did advise a client on it last week, and I really wanted to emphasize that. But for really everyone else, if you're not an American and you're not a resident of the U.S. at all, you can participate in owning, buying, selling ETFs, bonds, stocks in the U.S. without paying any taxes on the capital gains. That's long-term trading, that's day trading, that's options trading, that's calls, that's futures, that's puts, that's whatever you want uh, is not subject to U.S. tax. Why this works is because code section 871. Now, 871 is tax on non-resident alien individuals, right? So A is income not connected with a U.S. business, a 30% tax. And then number one is income other than capital gains. So it basically says as long as it's not capital gains, it's not subject to to U.S. tax. Now, this doesn't exempt you from capital gains on sale of U.S. real estate. If you buy a house in the U.S., yes, you have to pay tax in the U.S. I hope you make a lot of money, but I hope you know we can we can manage it and manage the taxes. But you can't just buy and sell real estate without paying taxes. But stocks, yes, you can. I'm not going to go into too much code detail on this video. But the other support is that when you tell them that you are a non-resident, they will withhold taxes on your dividend income. So dividends, yes, are subject to tax. But capital gains are not. If they were subject to tax, these brokers would withhold taxes on your capital gains. But they're not subject to tax, so they don't withhold taxes. I have a lot, a lot, lot of clients investing significant funds in this and not paying taxes. So it works, both from the practical application of what the brokers are doing and the actual technical application as to why they're not withholding taxes. How we set this up is very nuanced. And it also is kind of influ in, it like impacts into what we need to be concerned about. So how we generally set this up is with U.S. accounts. So you can open an interactive broker's account as a U.K. person, but you're opening the U.K. version of the account. Generally, when you're outside the U.S., the cost to make the trades and the trades that are available to you are much more limited than when you're in the U.S. or with a U.S. broker's account. So most accounts that we open are in the name of LLCs, whether it's multi-member LLC, single-member LLC, we'll get into that and what to be concerned about. I'll talk about my recommended structures and how I think most clients should set this up. Using a U.S. company allows you to have a U.S. brokerage account. Based in the U.S., you get better fees, better anonymity, better asset protection. There's a lot of reasons to, to do this, and I'm going to talk about the flexibility of it as well. So how you set this up, if you want to, you go online and apply. So you can apply for personal accounts at many of these brokerages as a foreign person. They're just going to open the international versions and charge you a lot more fees. If you want to open a, an LLC version, you need to open your LLC, get your EIN number, have some uh, you know mailbox address, and then apply for the brokerage account. Like I have clients doing it all the time. I have people that 
come out to me, contact me, and they say, oh, yeah, I've been trading for many years. I set it up. I figured it out. And then I have clients who pay us to set it up for them. There's different nuances and there's complications with each type, type of account. Uh, for example, Interactive Brokers is generally the easiest. Uh, people do Ninja Trader, TradeStation. Um, Charles Schwab is really great, but you have to invest a minimum generally of $250,000, which I know is, is not nothing. It's a, it's a significant amount for most people. That's how you do it, right? You just go to the website and apply, or I think you should do it in the name of an LLC, and we help people do this every day. Now to the juicy part. Now, this is really important. This is what you need to be careful about, and there's four little steps right here. The first one is your local tax laws. So this is super important, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but you need to be careful about how you pay taxes where you live, because potentially, while it's tax-free, in the US, you're subject to tax where you live. So if you live in the UK and you have this LLC, I don't think, I don't know if you can just pay no taxes. I did work with a guy in Italy today. He said he could set it up in a way and we're opening the LLC for him with structured ownership, whatever. But he says he can invest and do it and, and just pay his taxes at the end of the year, which still will save him a lot of money. Instead of having his taxes withheld on every trade, he can pay all the taxes at the end of the year. So it still like gives you full control of your assets and your money and anonymity and privacy and you know there's a lot of control it's a lot of reason to invest in these type of accounts especially when considering the options available locally but you do need to consider and review with your local advisor your local cpa what the tax implications of doing this are in canada for example there's a tax called a FAPI tax fapi and you can't just have a, an llc and just invest tons of money some people say you can some say you can't some are more aggressive, some are more conservative. It's your prerogative. If you want to invest with like pretty relatively low risk of your government finding out, but it is subject to tax, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to do taxes in your own country, but you need to understand the risks and you need to make an informed decision. Don't just do stuff based on YouTube videos. Seek real advice. That's number one, local tax law. It's very important. Number two are estate taxes. So if you have more than $60,000 in a brokerage account, while you're not subject to capital gains taxes, there are estate taxes. And it seems, it's so frustrating to me because people aren't aware of this. I hope you watched it this far in the video because there are estate taxes. So if you have $100,000 in a brokerage account and you get hit by a bus and it's in your own account, the estate tax exemption is generally only $60,000. So your family's gonna have to pay, not only pay, but they're going to have to file a form 706NA, which I explained on my channel how to complete that form. I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself, especially if there's taxes to pay. But they have to complete that form and pay up, up to a 40% tax on the asset value over 60000 So if there's 100000 in the account, they're paying 40% of 40000 But the, the other bad part about that is it's going to take two years for the IRS to process it. So you have to go out of pocket, pay this money to the IRS, pay these taxes, wait two years till they process and audit it, then you get the money back and you can't exit investments, control anything. The third thing, really quick, that you need to be careful about, how you're going to structure your ownership. So whether you're using a layered structure, um, which could be a... Generally, to avoid the estate taxes, we use a foreign corporation, International Business Corp, or foreign trust. We've been really getting into the Panama Private Interest Foundations, which are really great. They're like foreign trusts, but they're much more affordable to set up than other foreign trusts. And uh, they're just a little bit more simplified. And they can own an LLC, and then that can have a brokerage account. And there you go. You got a foreign trust with an LLC, and you have all your investments in here. And that's really a great estate-proof, income tax-proof way to invest your money. And there's a lot of privacy there, so it could be a really good option. The other way is whether you want to have a single member LLC, a multiple member LLC. A multiple member LLC can kind of get you out of estate taxes a little bit by kind of confusing the issue by registering kind of as a U.S. person and splitting the ownership. It technically is still subject to U.S. estate taxes, but it's way more complicated and nuanced and generally not as enforced by the brokerages. So a multi-member LLC is like the broke man's estate tax planning. I don't mean to insult you when I say the broke man's. I've set up a lot of these for people and it can be a good solution because obviously having foreign trusts and foreign corporations has an additional cost to it that you need to factor in when you're an investor. Number four, the fourth thing you need to be careful about is withholding taxes. So if you are in a dividend investor, you know, they're going to withhold 30% taxes unless you have a tax treaty. If you're from a treaty country like Italy, they'll withhold 15% on the dividends. But generally, they're going to hold at least 15% on the dividends and nothing on the capital gains. So if you're going to invest in dividend stocks, you can sell at a premium before the dividend's issued and then buy it back. You can manage it how you want or you invest in ETFs that have dividend stocks. There's different ways to get around investing in dividend stocks, but you don't you just don't get the cash flow. So it's kind of annoying um, that 
you still have to pay income taxes on the dividends, but I don't make the rules, guys. I'm just telling you what they are. Depending on your situation, I'm going to make the following recommendations. So if you have $1,000, just open a brokerage account and figure it out with your own name. It's fine. If you have um, anything more than that, basically, but under $100,000 and you're young and relatively healthy, what I would do is just open a single or multi-member LLC. Depending on your situation, if you're a single person, you live alone, just I guess a single member LLC is fine. But if you have any family near you, if you have a wife, or you have kids, open a multi-member LLC, put them on it and make sure they have access potentially to the account or you write down your password in a place where they can find it so they can get access to the account. So if you do get hit by the proverbial bus, they can access the account, liquidate the funds and send them out. Maybe you make a video that says, hey, watch this video and you explain, here's how, I hey, I'm sorry, I passed. Here's how you enter my account. Here's how you move the money out. Here's how to get authorization to do it. That works for under 100,000. For anyone over 100,000, it's really like, Having a, a foreign corporation, it can be, I've done it with Costa Rica Corps for people that live in Costa Rica or for people that uh, are in Europe, they'll use like um, Isle of Man or uh, du uh, Dubai companies, that's fine. You can have them own LLCs. And I've been recently doing a lot of Panama Corps and then Panama Private Interest Foundations. And we've been setting these up for clients and it's just a great option. It gives you estate tax protection. It gives you inheritance tax, like, like estate tax planning. And it also, you still pay no income taxes. So it's a really great solution for uh, for all things. So if you're making over 100,000, I recommend you uh, you do something like that to really protect yourself from estate and income taxes. And if you want our help with this, you can schedule a call and we can set it all up from you from A to Z with our uh, network of professionals, the, with our team. We can set up the structure, the bank accounts, the brokerage accounts, and hand, hand, hand hold you, hold your hand through the whole setup. You can schedule a call to talk to us at jamesbakercpa.com slash schedule or send us an email. I'd love to help you out with this uh, because it is quite complicated. As you can see, it's very nuanced, but at the end of the day, it's an amazing opportunity to invest in the biggest market in the world in U.S. dollars tax-free. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one, guys.